Hello and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to configure the TP-Link WDR 3600N600 wireless gigabit router that I just unboxed earlier. Now, if I sound a little bit odd, I don't mean to, it's because I've got this microphone. I've actually had to stick it to my face because um, the microphone I usually use for this isn't somehow Wikipedia will work with it. So I've had to decide to use this microphone, which is rubbish. So I've had to stick it to my face. So <laughs> it's not nice, really. But here we go. I have to do. You have to do what you have to do. So anyway. Um, so, the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to have to find out the IP address of this router um, so we can configure it. And the, to find that out, we need to go down to your local network settings. Uh, you need to click net Open Network and Sharing Center. You may have to right click it and click Open Network Sharing Center because sometimes they don't appear. Uh, when it comes up, um, find the one that applies to you. you. Obviously, you'll only have the one connection on the local area network connection. Uh, if you're, you know, only got one LAN card, I have three in this computer, so I know this one is this one for it. Um, you're gonna have to find. You gotta click when you when you go on it. Click details. Uh, now what you're gonna need to look for is the default gateway, uh, the IPv4. So, and that is 192.168.0.1. This is the IP address of the router that we're gonna configure. So, what we need to do now is we need to pull up a browser. So we're gonna use Google Chrome for this. And uh, type in the IP address. So 192.168.0.0.1. Press enter. You'll now be presented with this box. Um, at this stage, you'll need to enter the um, default um, username and password, which is admin for both. Press login. You'll then be presented with this page. Save it if you want. Whatever you do want to do, I don't know. So here we go. So this is what you'll be presented with. It tells you the firmware version, uh, MAC address of the device, what currently the SSID is, and the channel, what channel it's currently using, and all the rest of it like that. So, the what we're going to need to do is I'm going to need to set the, the, the LAN port to a different one, but we'll do that last. So, what we're going to do is we're going to set up the wireless first. So, wireless 2.4 gigahertz. And the network name is what I have have in my house, as you've probably seen before. Uh, it is a bit of a strange name, but that's why I've named it. Um, so, obviously, this, as this isn't the, um, the 5 gigahertz, we can just name it what it is. In standard. Select where you, wh which country you're based in, um, and select the type of network you want. So, and the channel width also that's fine because also you can do a bit both. Channel auto is fine as well. And press save. Press OK to the disclaimer. It will now change effect. Um, so the router will reboot when it once it reboots it will change effect. So when we'll reset it in a minute. Go to the wireless five gigahertz. We'll do the same again. This time uh, we can leave the five gigahertz on the end, uh, and we can change it again to what we had. Like so, like so, like that. And um, an mix, that's fine. Channel width, whatever it wants. Channel whatever channel it wants to have. Press save, um, and it'll again change when the router changes and um, when it reboots. Uh, we've got some more settings, WPS, so if you want to connect to a wireless protected setup, wireless security, what type of security the wire you want for your wireless, um, you can select WPA2 which you'll probably be having, the password uh, which I'll put in now. Um, so, uh, and again, keep going down, press save. And once that's done, it will save again. Next time, and uh, the um, the router reboots. And um, you've got plenty of settings. You've got uh, MAC address filtering. So if you want to let some people on, but not everybody, uh, you can filter them through that. Wireless advanced. So transmit power, which it's on high, which is what we want. Uh, wireless statistics. How many people are actually connected currently through the five gigahertz channel? Same applies to 2.4. Apart from there's not as many settings, but yeah, again, so the how many people are connected through it. Um, wireless security, so we'll change it again on here. Obviously, remember to change the wireless security passwords, otherwise you're going to be confused as to what to type in when you have your, you know, thingy. And when you're t changing the security, remember it's on WPA2 PSK because that's the most secure one, so you're going to need to use that one. Um, and that, yeah, so that's basically that. That, and um, again, just make sure you know you can have a look through all the settings. Uh, dual band selection, um, you can tell it to only work in 5 gigahertz or 2.4, you can work, tell it to work in both, which is what it's currently doing. Um, the guest network, which is, you know, how much speed you want as well for the, the you know, the the guest network. So you, you say someone logged on to the guest network, you can tell them how much they want in download speed, so that's 
1024 which is just a megabit per second just under just over sorry and so that's you know so allow guest network to my local network so if you wanted your guests to access your local network and files you tick that on um but obviously i'm not going to have that on um because obviously I don't want people to all the guests the guests to access the, the guests as well, uh network name, so that'll be what we've had before. So like so. Uh guest network two point four. Disable security, that's fine. Security is disabled is alright. Um you can turn it on, I uh, might put it on as well. Uh, presently I won't put it on. You can tell them what time it's available to be able to everybody's allowed to connect to it, which is a very good feature of this router. It's got a lot of features for the money. Um so you can do a lot with it. And uh, TC is N and five gigahertz. So like so a bit of a long thing. Press save, right until you save. Um, and that'll do, basically. There you go, you've created a guest network. Um, they're now available for people to use. Storage sharing, so if you wanted people, you know, for storage so on the guest network, so if people wanted to, so you can access the storage on the back of the of the router, they can do. DHCP, so if you want the DHCP on, this is like the IP address, what you want it to assign to your computers. So, for example, it would start off at 100. It's a bit like a telephone number. Um, well, it is, but in I it's for computers, so... Um, we're 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 going to turn the DHCP off in a bit because obviously the way of this route is going, we don't need it. So um, you can tell it to do be an FTP server this computer. Does that mean this router, which is very good? Uh, you can tell it to be a media server. It's got lots of features. Um, you can do a lot with this computer. Uh, I keep calling it a computer because basically they are really computers anyway, routers. But anyway, it's not a computer. <laughs> it's such. It's more of a router because that's what it is. Uh, now there's forwarding, uh, virtual servers, pop triggering, DMZ, UP, UPnP, universal plug and play, it's enabled, make sure that it is. Um, security, change security type of your firewall which is very advanced um, as well. Advanced security, local management, yeah. Remote management, make sure that's turned off, obviously it says 000, so technically it won't work anyway. So make sure that's always off because we've had there's been a bit of an issue with these TP-Link routes and people trying to get into them and they're actually been succeeding from the you know and not just TP-Link but other uh, other routes in the in the world uh, hackers have been trying to get in and they've been managing to do that. Uh, Internet access control uh, tell you what what can pass through the router what can um, host settings and targets and all the rest of it. So it gives you a little bit of a, an idea here what what they do. Uh, advanced routing destination, you know, if you, you know, it's quite a very, very advanced router. Um, again, bandwidth control. So if you just wanted this to allow only that amount to come through from the one part, then that's what will happen, and it's not very early amount. And so you know, it's it's, it's very good. Um, what this router does, it's got a lot of stuff. You can set the D DNS, um, uh, DDNS, dynamic DNS, IVPv6. If you want that on, you can do system tools. You've got uh, time settings. You've got your diagnostics, um, you've got your firmware upgrade, battery defaults. So if you want to, if you say it all went wrong, you could do that. Backup from star, backup the current uh, firmware, reboot the router, which we'll do in a bit. Password, system log, statistics, and you know all the rest of it. So it's just that. Um, quick setup. If you didn't want to do it that way, you could do quick setup. Um, if you wanted to go through that way, WAN. Set up the WAN. So this is so when you plug in your BT open reach modem, or other TP-Link modem, or anything like that, you can do. Mac clone. So if you wanted to clone the MAC address and um, to for for something to work, you could do. And that's about it, really, of the basic overview of the TP-Link and um, WDR three six hundred wireless router internally. You know of the configuration page. Um, if you wanted to change the IP address, which we'll do now, um, we're going to turn disable that off, save. So again, it won't make change until it reboots. And um, we're going to need to change the LAN address because the place it's going. So, um, 1.4, one .3, yep, 1.3. Okay, and um, save. Okay, it won't, it won't change until the the route is now restarting because um, obviously it needs to for this to work. So, obviously at the same time, the wireless address will change and all the rest of it like that. And for this to work, we're going to now need to have to. Um, Type in a different IP address. It may not work, so I've disabled the DHCP. 
and in that case I'd have to connect up a second LAN cable from my actual network in this house so it reads it there. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It varies, this computer can sometimes all of a sudden switch over to the other network while I'm doing this and obviously that's quite annoying. So, uh, hopefully it won't do that. It's now restarted so we can actually um, just type in the IP address of the, what it is now. So 1.3 isn't it? I keep changing. 1.3, see if it gets there. Hopefully it'll find it. If it doesn't, we're going to have to plug in the other wi wireless, um, not all the wireless, or another wired uh, cable into the back, and hopefully it'll all spring to life. Um, see if it's recognised. It's recognising again on here. Um, no, it's a little bit confused as to what's going on. Um, so yeah, it can't, it can't find it. Uh, at this point, try try turning it off, turn it back on. Try different methods. There's all sorts of different methods to try and see if we can get it to work. If not, then we're going to have to do my last method um, to see if it's going to work. As you see, this is basically just going to be an access point. This 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 is all this is going to be. It's not really going to be, you know, a rework search. It's just going to be an access point with gigabit features. That's all I really wanted from it. Um, so um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Really, um, hopefully it'll do well. Um, shouldn't be bad, really. So yeah. Um, let's see how well we do. Um, right, let's see if, how, if it's found anything. It might not. It might. It might need our other LAN cable, which we're gonna just gonna do now, because I think it, it does, because it'll get confused as to where to go for a, an IP address, as it can't d give it an IP address because it's not the DHCP server anymore. So let's plug in a LAN cable. So uh, one of the included LAN cables with this device, I can just use one. And plug it in to the other thing. Sorry if my voice sounds a bit fady again, as it's the microphone. I can't really help that. Um, that's just how it is. Um, and all the wires got kind of tangled now. So oh dear me, oh, that's what you hate about wires. They all get tangled. <laughs> Never mind. And this microphone is gently becoming unstuck from my face, uh, <laughs> which isn't good because it'll fall off in a minute. Um, right, so let's plug it in. Uh, it's not solid tape, I'm using gaffer tape to stick it if anybody's wondering. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's the only thing that'll stick to my face. Uh, right, let's see how well it does now. Right, it's found it, yes. As you can see, it's changed all my IP address settings and that's what it needs to do. So let's go 1.3 again. Right, here we go. So admin and the password admin. You can change these. I recommend you do. Don't keep them as default. I'll change mine in a bit. Um, login. There you go. And away it goes. Everything is how it is. How it should be. So thank you very much for watching my overview of the TP-Link um, WDR3600 configuration page. Uh, if you enjoy it, thank you very much. Um, please like, comment, and subscribe. Goodbye.